that uh, right now there are some talks going on in Vienna over the Iran nuclear deal. There's a number of uh, Iran and the U.S. have agreed to a path back to the nuclear deal. This is according to the New York Times. So they're saying that in indirect talks. So the way this is working in Vienna right now is you've got Iran there in Vienna in a hotel with a lot of the European Union diplomats from the European Union. And they're all, you know, you can see them all sitting here in this in this. Um, no, actually, I think this is the U.S. side of this. This is. Uh, I don't see the Iranians in this photograph here. But what's happening? Well, no, this is, I think, that side. So you've got the Iranians. <laughs> the U.S. won't talk directly to Iran. Uh, so they're in a hotel across the street. <laughs> so you've got American diplomats sitting across the street. And then you've got the Iranians in the other, in the other hotel. And you've got these European Union diplomats going back and forth messaging Go, like arbitrate is sort of not arbitration, but this is like mediation between the two countries. Like, well, they said this. What do you say now? And then they go back and forth as messengers between the two countries sitting in two different hotels. But it does look like we're making progress on the Iran nuclear deal. It does look like the U.S. is trying to enter back into it. The Iranians are talking. They're ha they said that they're feeling pretty positive about it. The Iranian people don't feel quite as optimistic yet. They're kind of like, yeah, we'll believe it when we see it. Uh, but the Iranian government is saying that they're feeling pretty positive about it. The U.S. is saying they're feeling pretty positive about it, that it looks like we're going to be entering back into that Iran nuclear deal and lifting those sanctions against Iran. This would be excellent news for the Iranian people. They've suffered enough under U.S. sanctions. Um, and I think this is to be expected. I think a lot of questions that we've got about Joe Biden um, entering back into the Iran nuclear deal, as well as... Joe Biden restoring funding to the Palestinians. I just want to make sure on that. Um, because I just had heard this. Yes, that he is re uh, reversing the Trump ban on aid to the Palestinians. Biden has restored that aid to the Palestinians. So I think what we can see is Joe Biden. This is to be expected. So uh, we Joe Biden is trying to just get us back to what Obama did. Right. He's just trying to reverse us back to the Obama years, the good old days. So he thinks of whatever happened at 2016 before Trump came along. That's what Biden is trying to do for better or worse. And in some cases, that's more difficult. It's not exactly the right path. You know, when we're looking at like the southern border, for example, things have changed. Um, the times have changed. The, the desperation has changed. And so the issue at the border is different than when Obama was in office. It's, it's much more, um, it's worse. But when it comes to things like the Palestinians and the Israelis or when it comes to things like the Iranians uh, or, and we've even seen Joe Biden kind of, you know, do the same rhetoric against North Korea as Obama. We're just seeing him go back to the Obama era. And that's what we can expect from Joe Biden. That is to be expected. This is what we've all expected, that he would try and attempt to just go back to the Obama years. There will probably be forces around him that don't want him to go back to the Obama years. They're going to try to stop him. They're going to say, we don't want the Iran nuclear deal. We do see a lot of people that are against it in particular, a lot of people against the aid to the Palestinians. Mostly those who support Israel are going to be against both of those issues. Um, but Joe Biden is looking bound and determined to do it anyway. And then the real threat happens because once Joe Biden gets us back to the Obama era, a lot of this stuff is the stuff that has made the news over the last four years. And it's the stuff that gets people to to say, oh, see, Joe Biden is good for foreign policy. See, he restored us back. He did good things. He lifted the sanctions on the Iranians. He gave aid back to the Palestinians. And a lot of that is just a distraction because that's old foreign policy news, guys. That's old foreign policy news. And the new foreign policy news is what is going on with China and the aggressions against China and their ramping up of rhetoric against China and the new Cold War against China and the proxy wars that are probably going to be battled because of China, right? That's where we got to be focusing our attention to. Not the old wars. Everybody's fed up with them. Joe Biden knows it. The powers that be in the military industrial complex know it. So they're setting their sights on a new target and a new place to spend all that money. And also, the types of wars have changed. We're now spending billions of dollars on big tech types of military warfare rather than the traditional bombs and drones and planes. And we are now looking at tech 
from Microsoft, from IBM, from Google. It's new, it's evolving. It's the new wave, the new age in military uh, military aggression. And so that is where they're pivoting to. So they're doing all of these foreign policy things that make a lot of us say, oh, look, they're all great. Everything's so great. You know, Joe Biden restored things back to the way they were. And oh, yay, everything's hunky dory. See, Kim, you were wrong about Joe Biden and his foreign policy. He's not a bigger threat than any, you know, look, look at all the good things he's done. And in reality, we're just seeing a shift. He was all always going to go back to the Obama era. And now he's just shifting into the new uh, type of military warfare and that military industrial complex. And the United States will never stop because we can't seem to learn our lesson. Uh, never stop flexing military might as the means for intimidating other nations into doing what we want them to do. And that is unfortunately the truth of the you know, uh, American Roman Empire. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Please, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, you can email me, Kim, at KimIverson.com, or you can post on my Locals community. If you are a member there, go to KimIverson.Locals.com. That's also how you can interact. Uh, otherwise, guys, please be sure to subscribe, hit that bell, uh, sign up for my email newsletter. Uh, right now, it's just a list, and we will be working on that newsletter. I've been saying that for a while, but I promise you it's going to be good when it finally does start rolling out, and it will be soon. Um, go to my email, go to my website, Kim Iverson, Kim Iverson.com. I don't even know my own name. See that? Listen to me flub around. Kim Iverson.com and sign up for the email newsletter. And that'll be rolling out to you at some point. And when it does, I'll let you know, you know, I'll be sure to be on the show, letting you guys know that the newsletter is out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Uh, and stick around for the after show.